Welcome to the New Year's Eve or New Year's Week Eve of This is Talking Sci-Fi with Sci-Fi Sean and Just Randy. And we're here to tell the year 2020 to kiss our, our ass. booty, oh, our booty. ass. Are we going to say ass or booty? Ass! ass. <laughs> you suck, 2020. You had such potential. And then it became a car wreck all the way up to the very end in the election in November. Anyway, that's a whole other story for another time. Yeah, it is. So, um, we are going to discuss something that uh, has boggled Randy's mind for eons. That's old, classic television that's shows. Right. Yeah. And I'm not talking just science fiction. I'm talking old, old classic shows. So, I've given Randy the uh, chance to do a little bit of research because... Um, Randy is of the mindset of, and as you guys have known over the years, of uh, action, action, action. That's right. No storyline. <laughs> no uh, fake sets in the background. I want blowing shit up. Oh, you want I'm blowing a- shit up. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's it's crazy. I'm not talking about 2020 at all. <laughs> I keep going back like, oh, I'm going to ask Randy, what about, tw-? but I don't, I remember things about Randy and things about me that were really a shit fest for 2020, but we're going to talk about these glee- classic yeah. television yeah, shows. Yeah, we are. And I'm going to let Randy start by um, naming a classic TV show that he wants to talk about. I Dream a Genie. Okay. Completely hate it. You hated it? Hated it. Did you watch the entire series? No, but I watched enough to know that did I you, did not like this. Did you get through the black and white episodes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What did you hate about it? Just sh- that he runs around like he's a little bitch. He is a little bitch. Larry Hagman is a little bitch. Yeah, I just didn't like it. It's just boring and slow. And when her mom shows up and when the the queen shows up and wants her to take over and she don't want to take I don't know. I just didn't like it. I love it. You do? Uh, Lori and I, I bought the entire seasons on DVD and Lori and I watch them randomly. We'll sit and binge like two or three in a row because they're only 20 minutes right. long. <clears throat> um I've been a big fan of I Dream and Genie back when it premiered when I was a little kid. Really? I've mm-hmm. never seen it before. Um, one network, and I can't remember what network, came up with I Dream and Genie. I Dream of Genie. Yeah. And another network came up with a, another similar show called Bewitched. Yeah. With Elizabeth I Montgomery. It. And they were similar shows, but way different. Yeah. And, and I like doing these type of comparisons because... Um, you know enough about Bewitched to know what I'm talking about. Right. But uh, I was a big I Dream of Genie fan because it had a different type of humor than Bewitched did. Bewitched was more of a soap opera kind of a thing to me. And, you know, and, and yeah, I Dream of Genie, they had reoccurring characters and all that, but there was no set storyline like Bewitched was. But uh, I, would, I prefer Genie. She was sexy. I've met Barbara Eden twice in my lifetime. Oh, yeah? She was at uh, one of those shows, uh, I'm not naming anybody's name, but uh, that happened at uh, the Lakeland Civic Center a couple years ago. Oh, okay. And she was right. there, got to meet her, didn't get her autograph, unfortunately. I wished I had, because I've been through the whole autograph gauntlet for years and years. I just, I'm tired of it, really, you know, because it's just, they, long story short, I got enough autographs. But um, <laughs> I love I Dream of Genie. I thought it was great. Okay. Um, it was set in Florida. Uh, Major Nelson, yeah. um, which was played by Larry Hagman, which is from the Dallas fame. Yeah. Um, and uh, great actor, I think. And he was, that was his slapstick comedy debut. That was actually his debut uh, with television. Oh, really? That. So um, uh, Barbara Eden was, of course, Genie. She uh, did a fantastic job, I thought. Um the problem they had with the I Dream of Genie concept was the time frame that it came in. It was the, the 60s. Right. And they wanted to have this sexy lady play a genie, which was Bar- they found Barbara Eden, and who was um, married to someone, I'll get into that in a few minutes, which is a Star Trek connection. Oh, uh, God. So I connect everything to Star Trek, sorry. So they had her in this sexy outfit, and they filmed it, and they had to go back and redo it because you could see her belly button. You couldn't show a belly button uh, in that time frame on that's television. That's crazy. So that's why you see the costume and it's covered from here, you know, all yeah. the way up. But um, Major Nelson is a, ast- a, a training astronaut for NASA. Um, has a uh, just quick synopsis if you haven't watched it. I, listen to Randy, <laughs> but Randy's wrong completely. It's oh, a great God. show. It's a great show. He just doesn't like that time frame. Yeah. 
He cra uh, Major Nelson uh, has a problem on his uh, test flight, crashes on this island, finds this bottle, this, this magical looking bottle, and pops the cork open and out pops the genie, and that's how the story, the story begins. begins. Yeah. So she is his genie, and causing all types of mischief and trouble and yep. everything. And uh, mm. you have uh, um, um, Major Healy, you have Dr. Bellows, which is like the Snoopy, Snoopy guy that's yeah. trying to figure out right. what's going, what's going on, on what's all the time, and he's always into trouble. And uh, um, you have uh, Roger Healy. I said Healy a minute ago, but yeah. Major Nelson is Larry Hagman. Then you have uh, Major Healy or Roger Healy. Roger. I forget. I forget what his. But he, you'll recognize him from uh, a lot of old television shows. Well, yeah. you wouldn't. I wouldn't because you don't watch old television. <laughs> he was on the Match Games uh, game show and all that, and that's his sidekick. And it's a great storyline. It's. It's. Uh, I think I want to say it's five or six seasons at last. Yeah. Barbara Eden was married to. Um, darn it. Uh, uh, Michael and Sarah, which uh, played uh, a Klingon, Klingon in the yeah. original Star Trek, I came, knew that. and he re reprised his role in Star Trek: The Deep Space Nine. And he makes cameo appearances. He's the Blue Gin. He's the genie that put Genie locked her in the bottle. Oh, okay. he was like the head genie guy, right. and he makes a couple cameo appearances. It's fantastic. I love Michael and Sarah's voice, and you you Batman fans will also recognize him from the animated Mate, series. Yeah. He's uh, He does the voice of Mr. Freeze. Yep. I'll get you, Bruce Wayne, and your little dog, too. So, you know, it's just a good connection. Yeah. Bewitched was okay, um, but over the two magical shows, if you will, I picked I Dream of Genie. Yeah, I didn't like either one. All right. My turn. Yep. Um, <coughs> have you ever watched uh, the television show? Uh, God, I, the name leaves me right now. Obviously, you haven't um, watched it. No, I, I'm, <laughs> no. <laughs> I am. I'm just. I'm drawing it out. Guy had a red sh long sleeve shirt, and a white hat, and they were on a boat. And, Gilligan's uh, Island. <laughs> it struck their tiny raft and plunged them th down a thousand feet. Well, no, that's Man of the Lost. <laughs> this is the tale of the castaways that are here for a long, long time. They have to make the best of ways. I wouldn't know. It's an uphill climb. It's an uphill climb. There you go. The first mate and his skipper to do their very best. Great song. I know. It's one of my most favorite. I was a huge Gilligan's Island fan. I loved it. I thought it was great. <clears throat> it was frustrating at times because you have these uh, seven... Stranded castaways on Gilligan's Isle, and one of them was a GD professor that could build things, and he could build batteries out of coconuts and all types of great things, but he couldn't fix a hole in a boat. Right, or just build a raft. Yep, yeah. or build a raft or whatever. But uh, they did remake movies of that show and everything, and uh, they tried really hard. Yeah, Tina Louise played uh, uh, Ginger. And she was uh, mad because it, it just uh, Hollywood had stereotyped her because she was this real actress, and she was on this sitcom show. But uh, Bob Denver, who was also in the Life of Dobie Gillis and something else, old television shows, but they had great storylines on Gilligan's Island. It wasn't just them trapped on an island. Well, it was just them trapped on an island. What yeah. was your favorite Gilligan's Island episode? I couldn't tell you. I I, I I liked it, and I watched it as a kid, I remember. I haven't seen it in years. I just remember bathing suits, maybe? Bathing suits. Gilligan always would screw up the, the plan of getting off the island. And they had found this <laughs> transmitter, and they got it working. The professor got it working, and Gilligan went out to do shore fishing and went back and snatch, snatched the uh, transmitter and oh. went out there and a fish <laughs> ate it. So... <laughs> they were catching all these fish to find this transmitter. They were all talking to the fish, and the howls. <laughs> Lovey was talking to a fish head. It was just that I can just remember that all. And then the giant spider episode when they found the pigeon and it got trapped in the cave with the giant spider. And see, I don't recognize. They had to get the spider stuff. drunk, and it was really hilarious. Really, you know? I don't. I, I remember it as a kid, but I just you don't remember when the big uh, um, crate washed up. They had the seeds in it, and they planted the seeds, and the plants grew: carrots, beets, uh, spinach. And they were all eating them, and then. Um, 
they went, and all of a sudden Gilligan starts getting super strength, like Superman, and that Marianne, could, Marianne could see a long way with her eyes, and um, Mrs. Hal could like run really fast, like the Flash, <laughs> and then uh, the professor's like, Gilligan, where did you do with that crate? Well, the seeds came. He goes, oh, I built this table. They'd been eating on this table, and he flipped over, and it said, radioactive seeds do not oh consume. My God. <laughs> so that was another great episode. Watch Gilligan's Island, young people. Oh, Please, it's a great show. Wow. So... Give me one of yours. Adam's Family. Okay. You like the Adam's I, Family? I loved it. Never really watched it until you sh- told me about it. And um, Adam's Family was great, and I liked it, but yeah. I was a Munsters guy. Did you ever watch the Munsters? Give me a rundown real quick. Um, Frankenstein's the husband. He's married to a, 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 a lady that's uh, Mrs. Frankenstein, but her name is Lily. I have to go back and look at that. I don't um, think I've seen that. Our ever. guest star last year from Sci-Fi, right, Barto, yeah. yeah. Butch Patrick. Right. He was the with kid. Eddie Munster. He was a little werewolf yeah, guy. Yeah, he yeah, was I've in that. It. I've seen it. And uh, it's a great storyline. Grandpapa um, was a vampire. And uh, it was a great... And they had the, the niece that was the normal girl... Which they made fun of. Yeah. <clears throat> she was a regular human being. But Adam's family, you had Gomez and uh, um, Tish, Morticia. Morticia. And uh, my favorite thing, and the thing I remember the most about the Adam's family is her uh, getting the roses and cutting the, the bud off. And she just liked the, the yes, stem. Yes, right, yes. And, I mean, even in the beginning when he was supposed to marry... Uh, he was supposed to marry... Who's his wife? Who played his wife in that? Well, in the movie, it was Angelica Houston. I don't remember the actress's name from um, the television show. Okay, but anyways, he was supposed to marry her sister. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, they were supposed to get That's married. That's in the premiere episode? Yeah, the pilot. That. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was one of my favorite epi- uh, and you had episodes. Cousin, you had Uncle Fester yeah. and Pugsley and Wednesday yep. um, with the kids, and Grandmama was a witch. Yep. Um... What was the name of Morticia's uh, living plant that would be oh. like the vine? It was Cleopatra. Cleopatra? Yep. Oh, okay. Interesting. There's been plenty of things. Gomez was crazy. Uh, he was a, he was very eccentric. Always smoked a cigar. Yep. Had the train <clears throat> set that would run into each other, and that was their highlight. Lurch, another Star Trek connection. He played a character in the original Star Trek called Rock, R-O-C, um, which was a giant android right. that uh, uh, Colby, Dr. Colby, um, manufactured and what are little girls made of. That was another Star Trek connection there. So, yeah. Um, loved it, but I was a Munsters fan. Was you really? Yeah, I loved the theme song better. Um, the car was better. <laughs> the car was pretty awesome. You have to admit that. Get that you, yeah. know. you ever seen one of those Munster cars that people bring to the shows? We need to get one for sci-fi. I tried. I, there's one in Orlando. Which is coming up in uh, February. It's the 20th. February the 20th, 2021. Our theme is Rise of the Robots. It's going to happen. It's not going to be canceled. It's not going to be put on. We just ask that you wear your mask and kind of halfway try to practice social distancing because we have over 30,000 guests that show up for this. And I keep telling the powers that I have to work with. How are we going to social distance 30,000 people? Well, hey, if everybody comes in a costume, we ought to be good. Everybody's going to automatically have to wear a mask. So I mean, that's the thing. Masks have become a fashion statement. But anyway, Munsters and... Adam's Family. Yep. that's I love it. I absolutely love both of those shows. Yep. Um, do you remember the old... Uh, gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull something out here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try... Let me think about it. I've lost my place because Gilligan's Island threw me. Um, Sanford and Son. Did oh, you watch yes. that? Yeah. I mean, here and there. Very good. All right, I'm done. I love Fred Sanford. I came around the corner because Randy lives around the corner of my house. Yesterday, we were coming back from doing some final Christmas shopping, and I'm like, "What are all those cars? Is there a, a, a is there a car lot they here?" They all now? run. I know they do. I've called the city on you. That's what they told me. Hey, they have showed up. Have they really? Yeah, they want to know if there's tags on these cars. See, everybody fucking lives here. Really? Has a car. That is crazy. It is. I mean, I got two kids that drive. Me and the wife. That's my taxpayer's money at work. I rent my my mother-in-law suite out, and they have two cars. Mm -hmm. Well, Well, um, 
we're going to talk about some more shows. Sanford and Son was a great one. I loved it. Uh, Lamont was the son, and Fred Sanford was plays was played by Red Fox, um, grumpy old black guy, and and uh, had a nemesis that uh, was a, a a lady that always gave him hell. Right, and he yeah. Cut her down. Um, and this is the bridge. Sanford and Son, the Jeffersons, and Archie Bunker. All in the family were all kind of in the same time frame. Oh, I didn't realize okay. that. Archie Bunker was the racist kind of a guy, and it was obvious because it was for that time frame. Right. Um, you had the Jeffersons, which would uh, um, George Jefferson. He was a racist the opposite way. He didn't right. like white people, and uh, they crossed over because George Jefferson was Archie Bunker's next door neighbor. Really, in the television show, and then then they well, we're moving on up. To the east side, to the deluxe apartment in the sky. That's where he moved from. Was next to oh, he was really? Next to Archie Bunker, yes. Oh. And Archie Bunker hated it because there was a, a colored guy that lived in their neighborhood. <laughs> Boy, that's a dated show, isn't it? Oh God. Yeah. Uh, so all connected. Sanford and Son didn't really have nothing to do with Archie Bunker, but it was the same time frame, the same set mentality. So yeah. check those out. Those are great. Um, Archie Bunker. Uh, it had uh, uh, Sally Fields was the uh, uh, daughter. Um, you had, uh, God, what was Meathead's real name? He was a popular guy. Uh, uh, he grew up to be an, a, a director. Find the name and put it here. Great show. Um, Love the theme song. It was yeah. him sitting in front of a piano playing at the beginning. Yeah. Those were the days. I can't sing the rest of it because Edith sang it and... <laughs> Edith, you're killing me in there with the singing and the dancing and such. <laughs> Check them out. We're going to end yep. this show. We're going to yep. do another one next. Uh, we're going to continue this one, and we hope you enjoyed uh, the beginning talk, our Happy New Year show, if you will, kissing um, 2020 goodbye, thank goodness, and welcoming in uh, 2021. Happy New Year. God bless, and uh, take care of yourself. We'll see you on the next episode of This is Talking Sci-Fi with Sci-Fi Sean and Just Randy. Too. Talking sci-fi. And your host and starring Sci-Fi Sean and Just Randy.